After a long and bruising day in round 13 of the candidates, it's clear that the tournament is now going to be decided in the final round. It's an extraordinary day. Kramnik had white against Gelfand and pressed so hard and came so close to winning, but finally the game ended in a draw. While that was going on, Carlsen with the black pieces was pressing against Radyabov. Carlsen actually stood quite well out of the opening, but Radyabov was very solid. This is the position after 26 moves, and you can see that white's pawns on the queen side are split, whereas black's pawns are together. Basically, you know, that's the only real disadvantage that white has in this position. I mean, you could say that maybe this bishop isn't terribly good, but then again, you could also argue that white has control over d4, and that's a really nice square for the knight. And this rook can be activated as well. But this is a tough one. Oh, you, you could also say that black has a slight space advantage on the king side, but it's really hard to make anything of this position with black. If I can go on 20 odd moves to this position you can see not a lot has changed. This is really hard work. I haven't got time to go through the whole game in enormous detail. But yeah basically you can see the structure has hardly changed. That black still has this space advantage on the king side. Now one thing is that the position is now locked on the king side. Carson was forced to advance with the h pawn because white's rook was so active and he couldn't keep hold of that um, h pawn. he had to advance it but that means the king side is locked so Carlson can only concentrate on the queen side and this rook is very active indeed in this position Carlson played rook b7 and here it was very tempting for Rodiabov to exchange rooks he did exchange rooks in fact you know if you're heading tried to head for a draw here then it's Exchanging pieces is normally the way to go about that, but I think this was actually a, a big mistake. It's it's hard to hold the tension to keep pieces on the board, but I think Radyabov should have done that with either rook a8 or rook h8, because it's actually very hard for black to embark on any great winning winning attempt when this rook is so active. But Radyabov under pressure for the whole game wanted to simplify the position. Understandable, but that gave Carlsen more freedom. Now, I'm going to go on another, well, 15 moves, and they reach this position. Again, you can see the pawn structure has not changed a great deal. There's just been a huge amount of manoeuvring. But Carlsen has managed to bring the knight and the bishop, so that they're both pointing at this well, I was going to say weak c4 pawn. It's hard to prove that it's a weakness, actually, when white can defend it so well. What black would like to do, of course, is bring his third piece, the king, to c5 to attack the pawn. And he's getting closer to doing this. So, for example, after check here, when well, the knight comes back, you still can't take on c4 because... There's a, an unpleasant check on e6, and there we go. But what you can do is play a4, taking away the b3 square from the knight, and on the next turn, finally, it looks like you're going to conquer the pawn on c4. And at this moment, this is where Radyabov starts to crack, I think. Probably he should just bring the knight back, and... Of course, you still want to play king c5, that's not possible with knight b3. So you want to try to play a4, but the problem is when you play this, then the, the king comes to b4. Now, of course, black can never lose this position and can go around in circles a million times trying to confuse white, but it is very difficult to make significant progress. After the game, Carlson just said, well, I just had to keep going. I just had to keep going. Um, and finally, Radyabov starts to slip. He, Radyabov played a4, completely understandable, because he wanted to secure the position of the knight in order to keep the king out of the game. 
but you can see that pawn is now on the same color square as the bishop, so that's one more weakness. Still takes incredible persistence to get anything out of this position at all. I think objectively it must be a draw, but Carson just had this extraordinary desire to win this game. So, okay, he's managed to maneuver his bishop to look at the pawn on a4, but it's still not simple after this check. Problem is the pawn, the c pawn now advances. Now, if pawn takes pawn, then knight takes. Now, black wins the pawn on a4, but after the exchange of knights, this position is a total draw. Black cannot make anything of this pawn on c5. The king, you can never force the king off uh, the dark square, and also. You know, this well, well, these pawns are vulnerable, so that's just a complete draw. Excuse me, just one second, it's been a long day. So, Carson just came back, but of course, there's still a threat to take here. Now, King d4, check. So it's still not making, well, he's making some progress now. Now there probably is a threat to take this again. So, so an exchange of pawns and now knight d2. It's a really tricky position because sometimes that king can even break through to the king side. But finally, Carlsen conquers this pawn, a pawn up, but it's absolutely not simple. So he has to keep hold of this pawn. The king came to the side check and the king came to b7. By the way I should say at this moment Radyabov was down to uh, well the just a couple of minutes for, for all his moves. By this stage they're past move 60 so each time the, the players made a move they would get 30 seconds added to their time but basically Radyabov was down to something like a, a two minutes on his clock so he was under severe pressure whereas Carlsen had 15 or 20 minutes remaining. Carlsen had to repeat here to protect the pawn. His first intention he admitted after the game was knight c6 but there's something really bizarre happens here. Suddenly out of the blue this bishop is trapped. It has no squares. So Carlsen had to repeat. So again Rotyabov repeats the position. Now, this time, Carlsen goes back to a7, and now, if knight c4, threatening, black does not need to play king a6. Black can play bishop b5, pinning here. We'll, we'll see this motif later on as well. So if the knight moves, then bishop takes bishop. This wasn't possible earlier with the king on b7, when this check would have been fatal. So Carlsen has managed to wriggle so that after knight c4 he can cope with the threat to the a pawn. So king d4. Now th this is critical because this, for the moment, the a pawn is going nowhere, and this king could easily saunter into, into the king side. So Carlsen sat and had a think here, came up with knight c6 check, good move. And now the big temptation is for white to keep going towards the king side pawns. But then knight b4 check happens. I mean, Carlsen would have calculated this. Well, both players did, actually. It's clear. And now it still looks really critical. White's king is going in, but now a really important move that Carlsen would have foreseen in his calculations. Knight h1. With this move, black wins by the skin of his teeth. So bishop, for example, bishop takes pawn, knight takes g3, and Remarkably, it's a really curious coincidence. This time, the white bishop has no no decent square. All these squares are covered along, along the diagonal. You need to be able to move the bishop in order to advance the h pawn. So, king g5, but now you can just take and f4, and the knight won't be able to stop uh, to um, prevent the pawn from queening. So, a fantastic variation that. Carlsen would have had to calculate, so, and Radyabov did as well, and instead of king d5 played king c5. This is still very tricky. 
So knight e5. Now here, Radyabov should have brought the king back to d4, and then it's still not clear how Carlson is going to make progress. Instead, he played the very tempting knight c4. I think you know he'd seen those variations with uh, the knight ending before. Uh, excuse me, the bishop ending, and realised they were drawn. But after knight c4, he'd overlooked a very strong idea. Knight d3 check, and if this is taken. Now this isn't losing immediately, but suddenly white has to fall back on the defensive. And basically that bishop can control, uh, can protect both pawns. So for example here a4, the king if necessary can come to cover this pawn and slowly you're going to come forward and, and um, advance the pawns. So Radyabov couldn't take on d3. He played king d4, but now it's clear he's lost. That's very tempting to take this pawn on f2, but just take a look what happens. There is a bit of counterplay. I mean, probably black is doing very well here, but it you know it's not as clear as one would wish. But instead, Carlson had seen a really clever idea that clearly Radyabov had missed. Knight c1, bishop is running short of squares. It comes back, and now bishop b5. And white is, has very few moves here. The knight can't move because of the pin. The bishop well, can only come to this diagonal. That's absolutely hopeless. Um, so basically, black, white is stuck here. If the king retreats, I mean, the king can still move. But then black can slowly edge forward. And this is absolutely fatal. Uh, for example, here, well, I dare say knight a2 is possible, but knight d3 is a good move. Just threatening to take here, and the king and pawn ending uh, looks completely winning. And, well, basically, you, you distract the king with the a pawn, and your king will advance through here and, and take these pawns. Typical outside pass pawn position. So Radyabov, with just seconds on the clock, went all in. He played knight takes a5, but now he is completely lost. Carlsen is a piece up, and he just has to take care of his pawns on the king side. So Radyabov managed to take one of these pawns, but it really doesn't matter. Black's pieces come back to defend. And here, actually, Radyabov resigned. The knight is about to scoop this pawn, and then the g3 pawn will go as well. Um, you can you can take this off, but I mean, it really doesn't matter at all. If h5, then the king comes across to, to mop up the h-pawn. And as I said before, the knight can take the pawn, and then g3, and it's all over. So Carlsen manages to defeat Radyabov. And, and when Carlsen came into the press room for press conference afterwards. I've never seen him so expressive, so overjoyed. You know, he was high-fiving his manager. Normally he's, he's actually very guarded and careful. Um, but yeah, it was great to see him, you know, in, express himself and feel so pleased. So tomorrow is the showdown. Carlson and Kramnik are on the same score, they're level. Remember, if the scores are still level, Carlson will win on win the tie break because he has uh, a greater number of wins. So if they both draw tomorrow or if they both win, Carlson will win. So Carlson has the white pieces against Svidler. Kramnik has the black pieces against Ivanchuk, the mercurial Iv Ivanchuk. You don't know whether he's going to be a genius or whether he's going to lose on time again. Who knows? Anything could happen tomorrow.